Um, so this is the PDF, um, and what you get is um, simple rules. It's 2d6 um, for yes-no um, questions. Now, if you're familiar with, say, Mythic or any other kind of oracle, this is you know, nothing particularly exceptional. Um, roll low for no, roll high for yes. Um, a seven is a complication. Now, complications are not earth-shatteringly, uh, you know, they don't have to be kind of massive changes. They could be as simple as, you know, if, if you were... Um, about to go in through a door and you wanted to know um if yeah if there's anyone coming you know you're looking left and right you want to know you make sure you're not observed it could be that your mobile phone or communicator decides to go off at that precise moment and chances are you know, you know that will only hold you up for a second but it still it introduced something else um into your world a complication could be you know, of much larger scope it, it could be that you've been looking for you know, um you know some you know, sort of weapons dealer to get some uh, decent armory and the complication is they're dead you, know, you get there and they're you know, cut in half on the floor you know it's it can be big it can be little but it makes you think beyond you know i go to a i go to b i go to c you know uh, the next thing you're going to find in here is um, open-ended questions. And these are things that cannot be answered with a yes/no. And um, we use uh, this book uses game icons. And game icons are these um, little square icons, you know, which they their pictures. Every picture, you know, a thousand words, they can be very much open to interpretation. You know that could be. Um, if you know the musical uh, Little Shop of Horrors, that could be Audrey. It could be a Venus flytrap. It could be an alien. Um, it, it, everyone will see these pictures slightly differently. And given some context, um, they may mean something different in your game than they would in a, a different game, different session. Yeah. Um, so this, you know, that's a gift um, or a parcel or a box. It, and you would put them together and try and present a meaning. Um, there, it's explained. The whole process is kind of explained down there. Um, so, get yeah, rather than uh, you know, some articles give you uh, tables of words, so you get like a, an adjective and an adverb, or a noun and an adjective. Um, this uses um, images. Um, so, yeah, I think the example I've put here was the first image is associated with me to the Little Shop of Horrors. Um, so that would be Audrey 2. Um, so it's a little plant that feeds on blood and eventually on people. Um, uh, and then the second one, gift package box. Um, so um, here I've used, given the context of the scene I was in, um, I use the word plant and package in a kind of more police sort of thing, as in planting evidence. Um, so, yeah, that was in that particular scene, um, the the word plant was more important than actually being a vegetable. You know, it was um, yeah. So it, that was became planting a package or planting evidence. Um, now on this side, the clocks. Clocks are a feature of Blaze in the Dark and Forged in the Dark. Whenever you, uh, every clock has an event at one end and it, it starts at zero at the other. And so the, the classic example I, I um, have been using recently is you're searching someone's apartment. You, you've waited for them to leave. Uh, you're expecting them to go to work. And um, you, you're you know, so you're not expecting them to come back, so you you think you've got the time to um, uh, search the apartment. You decide roughly how long you think you've got. And if they're out all day, it could be an eight-segment clock. As you do each thing in the apartment, you 
tick down a a section of the clock. You know, it could be you search the living room um, and you don't find the thing, so you tick tick the clock. Fill in a wedge on the circle. You search the bedrooms, you don't find anything. You search the um, closets, you don't find anything. This clock is going to slowly tick down. When you run out of time, that person comes back. Now, the chance of you being in there for the full eight hours is very, very slim. Unless something happened and you end up knocked out on the floor and you're still there three hours later when they do come home. So it kind of allows you to measure time um, just by using wedges. But the other example is, let's say you're um, sneaking into a starport. Um, you know, you're in the, the sort of service corridors of a starport. Security is quite um, tight. They're on the ball. So you make a four um, a section clock. Now, Every time you fail some kind of stealth roll, every time you have to force a lock or cut through some fencing or you have to take out a camera, anything, whether it's a skill test or an actual action that the security could possibly notice, you fill in a section of the clock. So taking out the camera, filled in one, forcing the lock on a door, took, uh, took out another, um, you, know, you sneak around a bit more, you, you're making sort of stealthy type rolls and you're fine, then you fail one and then that's enough. On the fourth segment, the security, maybe they pick you up on a camera that you missed or you run into a security guard or maybe the janitor goes back and reports a, a broken lock. Um, if something triggers security, the alarms go off, the lights start flashing, they're looking for you. So the the clocks tick down um, events that are happening off camera and it saves you having to make sort of perception type tests um, for every single security guard, every round. You know, um, you, it cuts down the rolling, it just aggregates them all together. So... Um, you know, here's the sort of a six uh, an example of um, the clocks with events attached to each segment. So, you know, if you were trying to get to um, you know someone before they got away on a spaceship, when the first segment's filled in, they're loading passengers and stuff on the onto the ship. When the second um, segment goes they are securing the hatches the third one is they're requ requesting clearance from the uh, space station for um to leave then um uh, the uh, fourth one is opening the shuttle bay doors five is starting the engines and six they actually exit the space station and so if you were trying to prevent them leaving and trying to get to someone with the authority to prevent that takeoff, um, it, as you overcome each, as you fail to overcome each obstacle, that that six-section clock is counting down, and so the, whether you capture them or not um, is controlled by your own actions. But there's also you know events happening in your world outside of you um, the next little bit is just a little um, simple oracle for controlling conversations um, then you get some record sheets and then with these um, oh i'll go back to the record sheets what you've got is an npc list so you can keep track of NPCs, where they were, what any abilities and classes that you know about, and some notes. Um, the location is uh, useful because if you go back to the same cantina, you can find the same barkeeper. Um, if there was a rogue there, you, know, you you kind of just scan down the list and see what NPCs you had in that uh, location last time. Um, you could always make a little yes/no roll then to see who's still here they may have moved on um, or not um, so that was NPCs the scenes keep a little list of your adventures so far scene by scene where the scene took place what happened who was there um, the game entrance and exit is a little thing of um, 
how did you get what was sort of clue or the thing that um what got you here the chances are the exit of one scene could be the entrance to the next and often will so if you wanted to if you left the security station to go to the cantina you would just put you know left the there then arrived at the cantina and then carry on and from there you went to the space station um admin area so you get this little enter exit enter exit enter exit so you got this thread and if you wanted to change it up if there's a complication so um it may be that you know entry exit entry exit actually please sells oops um exit yeah and so on. Then the loose ends bit. Solo games in a sandbox world can um, create lots of loose ends. Like if you, if a complication says that someone takes a pot shot at you with a laser, but you don't know who they are, why they did it, that's a loose end. So you just got who, what, where, um, and you can leave this bit free for uh, connections. At the end of your session, or the beginning of the next session, look over your loose ends and look for connections. If you've had three different people take pot shots at you, or whatever, um, you you might think, is there a bounty on my head? Is there some reason why these people are all out to get you? And you could connect them all you know, with a question, you know, bounty, you know, or um, contract out on you or something. And these loose ends, where you start the game with this completely open world where anything is possible, the loose ends will form themselves into um, some the hint of a plot, a scheme that's going on. And then once you've identified one, that if you need to justify something... Um, you can use these loose ends and say, right, um, this happens because these things happened. And so you've got this kind of causation effect there. Now, the wheels. Um, what you're going to do is um, count around the wheels using D6s going in opposite directions. Um, so, you know, if I was to roll um, just the D6s here, Red is left, blue is right. So two to the left goes one, two. That's some kind of puncture. And six to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. An atom. Now, um, my first gut instinct there was nuclear leak. Okay, so um, that is... You know, if I wanted to know, start the scene, top of the scene, what's the, um, you know, the the big background thing going on here, and it all starts with a nuclear leak. From um, you know, from there, the next time I have a question that can't be answered, yes, no, I'll roll those d6s again. So going on four from there, one, two, three, four, that looks like a mob, and five from there, one, two, three, four, for five digital some kind of digital mob um, and you, you can depending on your situation you can ask any question that can't be answered with a yes or no and you try and interpret the answers using you know, what do these pictures mean to you yeah that might not be all the people that could be a population that, sorry, that might not be a mob, that could be just general population, and that could be the data, so the population data, um, it could be a, a, a hack of um, lots of people's data, you know, someone's hacked the Amazon servers or something, you know, who knows. It, the, your context is really, really important. Now, there are many pages um, of these, so when you've gone round one, you can go on to the next one, um, and you can print off as many of these as you like. And then, okay, so at the end, there is an example of play. Um, so here's the, um, this is Jess here. Um, so th there's the character sheet. Um, there's some world building questions at the start. Um, so th you see the game icons that I picked up with my interpretations, and then you, uh, you know, there's a clock in action here 
um, and uh, there's questions going on. So it kind of here you go. It's um, are more security forces uh, any more security forces come? Is a, a little roll, and I get a yes. So I can hear sirens. Um, so the security is on the way. I can hear sirens blaring. You know, things approaching. And so there's um, you. Know, what was happening in my um, couple of scenes here, and some explanatory notes. And that's your lot. Um, there's a few hints and tips. Um, yep, so that is the Stars Out number um, solo adventures. Thank you for watching.